What is the most inescapable fact of life? What is that inevitable truth that many people fear and many others seek to understand? And despite this fact, what is it that drives us to live? Harry Potter's seven books and eight films have captured readers and audiences around the world. Full of mythic archetypes and incredibly detailed world building, at the heart of it all lies what we consider to be the most important part of any story, its central theme. And it's through Harry Potter's journey that we discover what this theme is. The Harry Potter books are told through Harry's eyes. We see things almost entirely from his perspective. We only learn what Harry learns, taking our own journey alongside him. Muggle. Non-magic folk. In this way, we see how he matures, how his biases form, Not Slytherin. and how he makes decisions. I think I can tell the wrong sort for myself, thanks. In the opening pages of the first book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, or Sorcerer's Stone in the United States, one of the strongest themes is presented to us immediately, the theme of death. We hear about the deaths of three people, a mother, a father, and a dark evil wizard. Immediately after, an infant Harry Potter is delivered to the Dursley's doorstep, and so his story begins. Fast forward 10 years and we meet a now 11 year old Harry Potter. From the get-go, we see Harry has not been left in the best situation. He lives in a cupboard filled with spiders under a staircase, he's treated as more or less a slave, and he's relatively unloved by his aunt and uncle, the people charged with taking care of him. Any funny business, and you won't have any meals for a week. That all changes when he begins receiving mysterious letters delivered by owls. Although his aunt and uncle try to prevent the letters, and by association the magical world from reaching him, they can't stop him from learning the truth of who he is. Harry's true journey begins when Hagrid finally delivers one of the letters to him and he learns You're a wizard, Harry. He also learns the truth of his parents' death at the hands of a dangerous dark wizard, Lord Voldemort. How and why Harry lived have yet to be answered, but he is now one of the most famous wizards alive. As a result, death and its effect on Harry start to become an integral part of the story. Now that Harry has had his introduction into the magical world, he suddenly finds himself completely immersed in it. He sets off to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and it's there that he makes both friends and enemies. He is sorted into a house that prides itself on bravery, chivalry, and loyalty, but most importantly, each year and in each book, he faces a challenge orchestrated by Lord Voldemort, which constantly threatens his mortality. Luckily for Harry, he almost never faces these challenges alone. He always has help or guidance along the way. On the Hogwarts Express, Harry meets Ron Weasley. They get along almost immediately, finding common ground while talking about their upbringings. Shortly after, we meet Hermione, whose precocious nature gives off a slightly different impression. Despite some conflict over a short period, the three bond over a life or death situation and become best friends. Ron serves as an emotional rock for Harry. Although he can have a somewhat judgmental personality she needs to sort out her priorities and be very reactionary, Ron always knows when it's time to do the right thing. Hermione is more logical, more cautious, and kind of serves as the conscience of the group. Harry, no way! You heard what Madame Hoop said! She can be judgmental in her own way, <laughs> but her intelligence has gotten them out of more situations than they can count. Ron and Hermione are kind of two extremes of the mind, while Harry is the mediator. He often takes advice from both of them, and learns through their behavior, often towards each other, finding the balance between logic and emotion. These three share almost all their adventures together, and they wouldn't have it any other way. Throughout their years, they have supported each other as the best of friends, and it's safe to say that none of them would be alive without the other. Harry was blessed with a series of mentors and surrogate family members, starting with the Weasley family. It is widely believed that the Weasleys served as the loving family Harry should have had, especially Molly Weasley, who served as an incredibly loving surrogate mother. Hagrid served as a bit of a father figure for Harry. 
Remus Lupin and Sirius Black are kind of like uncles to Harry. Remus was by far the most responsible defense against the dark arts teacher Harry ever had, and Sirius gave a lot of heart and hope to Harry. Remus was also encouraging of Harry to be calm and steady in his decisions, while Sirius, who was more reckless, gave a bit of that to Harry. They both also served as a window to Harry's parents and a previous generation. Through them, Harry got a larger understanding of his parents' love for him. Although often perceived by Harry as an enemy, Severus Snape was still a mentor to Harry, albeit an unwilling one. I suggest you take extra care, Mr. Potter. Loss of limb will not excuse me. One of his most difficult teachers, Snape nonetheless taught Harry how to stand up for himself, defy authority when necessary, and he taught him enough about potions to be extremely helpful. And of course, it was Snape's love for Lily, Harry's mother, that left Harry with the revelation that love can come from even the most unlikely places or people. Albus Dumbledore proved to be Harry's largest influence on his life, both directly and indirectly. Dumbledore tutored Harry throughout his schooling, especially his sixth year when Albus knew he himself was dying. He had a limited amount of time to teach Harry how to finish the work he started, but he also took measures without Harry's knowing to influence his future. And he knew that he had to wait to divulge what Harry needed to know until the right time. Even with the support and guidance of friends and mentors, Harry is consistently bombarded with threats and ultimately Voldemort's return. Up until the end of Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry never had to watch anyone die, at least on a level he could understand. However, in the Goblet of Fire, Harry not only witnesses Voldemort's rebirth and the death of Cedric Diggory, he encountered the souls of his parents who were murdered by Voldemort before his resurrection. This is the point where the themes of both death and love not only become more important, but begin to become inseparable. At the end of Goblet of Fire, we learn more about why Voldemort couldn't kill Harry. Lily Potter, Harry's mother, begged for her own death in exchange for Harry's life. This conjured an ancient kind of magic that protected Harry from even the most deadly of curses. Love quite literally saved his life. As a result, Voldemort and Harry's fates become completely intertwined, which we learn from the prophecy in The Order of the Phoenix. One cannot live while the other survives. But even from the beginning of both of their lives, we can see that they are two sides of the same coin in many ways. They were both orphans with a difficult upbringing. They were both naturally talented wizards. They are even related several generations back. But it's not their similarities that matter. It's that despite their similarities, they each turned out very differently. Harry, despite his cruel upbringing, still understands love. Perhaps it was the love that Lily and James imprinted on him the first year of his life. Perhaps it's because that there was even some small semblance of care on the part of the Dursleys. After all, Harry was never abandoned by them. Voldemort, on the other hand, never even had the opportunity to be loved. Voldemort was left at an orphanage with no knowledge of his parents or heritage. As he grew, he came to understand the true nature of his existence. He wasn't born out of love, but deception. His mother, desperately in love with a muggle, used a love potion on him and they conceived Voldemort, or as he was known then, Tom Riddle Jr. As soon as Tom's father found out, he left his mother, who died during childbirth. Voldemort has one major difference from Harry, especially as Harry came of age. He had an enormous fear of death. He was willing to split his soul into multiple pieces to prevent his own death. He was willing to let his body deteriorate, and most importantly, he was willing to kill. Harry, on the other hand, shows numerous examples of selflessness and self-sacrifice. When Dumbledore died, Harry was no longer guided by any mentors. He was truly on his own. He did a lot of growing in the span of a year and faced his own mortality several times. Then when Snape faced his death, he provided Harry with his memories, which gave him the most crucial clue to orchestrating Voldemort's downfall. A piece of Voldemort's soul was embedded in Harry as a result of Voldemort trying to kill him as a baby. I'm ready to die. Harry's ultimate lesson came with the acceptance of his own death. He knew that if he died by Voldemort's hand in order to protect everyone he loved, they would be safe from harm. Because of a piece of Voldemort's soul latching onto Harry, the killing curse gave Harry one more chance at life. He took it, confronted Voldemort once more, 
and as he used the Killing Curse once again, the spell rebounded same as it did when he was a baby, finally killing Voldemort. Voldemort failed because he underestimated the power of love. He doesn't understand it, and in effect doesn't understand how the magic of love works, which in turn protects Harry. He used death as a means to power, while Harry allowed love to conquer death itself, becoming its true master, and for a moment, the most powerful wizard alive. These events could only take place over years of preparation and experience. An 11-year-old Harry could never have understood or accepted his purpose at the get-go. He had to learn gradually, through experiences and suffering, in order to grow enough that he was prepared to face his own death for the greater good. Harry's love, Harry's sacrifice, like his mother's, saved the wizarding world from the man who represented death, or the fear of death. The reason why Harry's experiences are so powerful and resonate so well with its readers is that love and fear are the two most powerful things that drive human beings. To us, the reader, Harry and Voldemort are meant to be love and fear. We each have a Harry and a Voldemort inside of us. I felt it would be a betrayal of the character if I showed Harry doing anything other than living what all along he has discovered to be true, which is that love is the strongest power there is. J.K. Rowling has said that the themes of these stories come from her own experiences. Mum died six months after I'd written my first attempt at an opening chapter, and that made an enormous difference. As she mourned, that feeling may have manifested itself as the theme of death in the story, and it became the conflicting force that Harry overcame the way she did. It's also quite possible that it was the love of her children that kept her going. Through Harry's stories, she's telling us that death is not something to be feared, and to love others is the most important reason to live. Hi guys, I'm Justin Zagri. And I'm Liana Manassian. And we're the co-creators of The Big Picture. That's right, so this is going to be the first in a series of video essays where we explore the most important part of the story, its theme. That's right, so uh, writers would call this a premise. You could also call it the heart of a story, but if you don't have a strong central theme, cinematography, makeup, CGI, it's not going to matter. Yes. And so we're going to be covering all sorts of things, not just movies. We're going to be doing TV shows, books, video games, etc. And while we already have a few things in the works, we also want to know what you guys would like to see. Absolutely. And the next video we're actually going to be working on is about a certain Magi zoologist. Magi zoologist. Magi zoologist. <laughs> We'd love to make this our full-time gig, and while our videos will always be free, if you like what you see and you want to support this and our other endeavors, please check out our Patreon page. Yeah, it's a monthly subscription service. It's as low as a dollar per month or per video, but the higher the amount, the cooler the perks. Right. And also, feel free to check out our social media. We're really active on Facebook. Um, and if you're a Potterhead, we have a lot of stuff on our channel that's really relevant to that. Um, we've made two fan films. We have one about Severus Snape and the Marauders, and one about Dumbledore and Grindelwald. Which is pretty relevant right now. Yeah, who's into Jude Law as Dumbledore. I saw that beard. It looks oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much for supporting us, watching us, and backing us. And we can't wait to see you next time. No, it didn't work. Didn't work? Try again. No? Huh? No? Oh. No, let me try. Oh, okay. <laughs>